August 15, 2023. Ukraine war, approximately nine years and seven months into the invasion of Crimea. Day 538 of Special Putin's operations. Big picture. Ukraine advances in the south, the Kremlin pushes in the north. Kremlin air forces used multiple glide bombs east of Kramatorsk, north of Bakhmut. Fighting continues near Kozachi Lahari. Numerous Kremlin missiles appear to have reached their targets in the last day. Nipa line. Reports of conditions are conflicting about fighting at Kozachi Lahiri. Kremlin mouthpieces claim the area has not been cleared, despite three days ago claiming all Ukrainian forces were repelled before landing. Ukrainian sources claim that there may already be bridges set up by Ukraine. 290 shells were fired onto the right bank in the last day. Zaporizhia front. Ukraine has pushed the contested line to the first field fortification outside of Robotyne. Heavy shelling and glide bombing near the Morky Yoli targeted Ukrainian troops well behind the ground contact line. Shelling east and north of the Morky Yoli, all the way up to the border near Kupiansk, was unusually heavy and appears to have included more glide bombs than previous days. It is unclear if this is a new development, or the result of better tracking by certain services. East Front, Donetsk. If you've been following our reports, you can guess which two areas saw Kremlin troops sent to die. Attacks in Marienka and Avdiivka were repelled by Ukrainian forces, under heavy bombardment. The Kremlin made an attack at Krasnoharivka just north of Marienka, results were unclear at this time. Bakhmut area. After heavy Kremlin armor losses near Klishchivka, both armies appear to have avoided any direct attacks in the last day, south of Bakhmut. Shelling did continue by both sides. North of Soldar, as noted in the introduction, shelling and glide bombing was unusually heavy in the large bulge around Sivusk, which starts into what we have labeled as the Oskil border front. Oskil border front. Shelling and bombing against Dranivka, Serebrianka, Biloharivka, and Platonivka, on the Seversky Donets, in the aforementioned bulge. Shelling and bombing was heavy around Kupiansk, with Ukraine repulsing attacks around Petropavlivka and Vilshiny. The Kremlin has four armies on this front, detached elements from other armies, and mercenaries on this front, making a very target-rich environment for Ukraine. Northern border. At least 15 towns and villages were shelled or bombed by the Kremlin. Kremlin mouthpieces claim another two drones were shot down over Russian lands, only 535 days after the end of the three-day special operation. Black Sea. The Kremlin sent shard-style drones after the Danube port of Ismail, with Ukraine reporting all drones destroyed. The Kremlin has five combat ships on patrol, none of them with missile capabilities. Ukraine world-related. The ruble is now currently trading for more than 100 rubles per US dollar. The Russian central bank has raised the borrowing interest rate to 12%. Shugu has requested North Korean produced arms. Included are North Korean production runs of the Pipisha, 41 submachine gun first built by Russia in the middle of WW2. Worryingly, for everyone including the troops asked to field them, the Kremlin has asked the NORKS to supply 170mm artillery pieces, which have an optional 60km shell. Mean old lady Winter has been spotted leaving her home and someone said she's headed this way. We aim to bring more. Like and subscribe.